Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk heel turns, we talk Survivor Series, and we've got more puns than you can shake a stick at. Stick around. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 396, just a couple away from that big fan appreciation show coming up in uh, just a few weeks. Uh, this is live from Pittsburgh, PA in the Mayhem Studios. I'm Sorgatron, ready to get going uh, with me from across down here in Pittsburgh. Papa LB, how you doing? What's up everybody? I am indeed Papa LB. Uh, I am happy to be here. I've got Tom Jones songs swimming around in my head and uh, that's not going to make things easy. No, definitely not. Also, uh, coming at us from up in the Bronx, New York, Mad Mike. How you doing, sir? TARDIS in hand. Ah, it's bigger on the inside, I, you know. It is huge on the inside, Sorg. It's also smaller it's on the outside. The day of the doctor. It's almost the day it's of doctor. It's almost the day of the doctor, and I'm excited. I did I did finally catch up, like, Sunday night of the last Good week. Good man, Sorg. Yes, I am ready for this. Uh, also, returning to the show, you know where is at Leg Kick TKO, very active with us on Twitter and in the Hangouts, and especially the TNA after shows. Uh, but joining us again, Jessica from the Roll Tide. Hi, y'all. <laughs> if if it says Roll Tide, you got you got to go full Roll Tide. So Roll Goddamn Tide. <laughs> Oh, no. uh, Dixie Carter on the podcast. So I'm ladies and gentlemen, Dixie ladies Carter, and gentlemen, everyone. control yourself, LB. Uh, but you can contact us. So check out all the other stuff, all the wrap ups, all the after shows, all the tweets, all the fun stuff over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find this show audio version and video version on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, as well. Uh, anywhere else you can find the mayhem and all of our classic episodes and such as well. Uh, you can also drop us a line. We love hearing from you guys at that Good email address. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Do the other guys pop in on that one and unmute themselves? Um, and you can also drop us a line at the phone number 412-206-WMS0 and leave a message. And if you want us to call back and maybe see what happens, that that's a thing, too. We need to follow up on that one, guys. Um, but uh, let's first uh, get started with this show with the only way we know how, with the fan mail. Uh, now, <laughs> LB, do you want to tackle that one first? Yeah, I do. I fucking do. <laughs> Thanks to our guest this week. We have a very special email. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it because I feel like it might be a little directed at me. Parts of it. And I have a motto Just a scope. that if, Just if I'm going to suffer, I'm going to do it to myself. So here we go. Dear the Wrestling Mayhem Show, I have to admit I would... Never have thought I'd enjoy hashtag raw country as much as I did. I assumed it was going to be another terrible over gimmick show where the focus is on the dumb guests and good wrestling is essentially, essentially told to ride the pine. There was so much good stuff on that show. Tree man band, or should I say the rhinestone cowboys were amazing as usual. Jinder Mahal's finger gun is my fave. There's a gift. Even the musical performance wasn't terrible. Jimmy Wang Yang's family seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> yep. Other than the ridiculous musical chair shenanigans, my only complaints surrounding hashtag rock country are minor ones. For example, CM Punk sold the headlock driver terribly. He should watch some Norfernum tapes. <laughs> Let me ask you some questions, the wrestling... <laughs> The Wrestling Mayhem Show, as long as that's okay with you. I know it's not going to happen, but where should Hulk Hogan be taking indie bookings from? My first thoughts are CZW against Necro Butcher in the match everyone's been clamoring for, and Inspire Pro against Jojo Bravo, so we can see if Bravo's a better sumo than Yoko's. <laughs> um, I, I, 
I don't I know where he's wrestling. I would love to see Hulk Hogan versus Necro Butcher in a, uh, a remake of The Wrestler. I, I don't know where he's wrestling, but I would love to see Hulk Hogan versus Grizzly Redwood in a Lumberjack match. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sword? Um, Hulk Hogan in the Indies, huh? Um, he, You know what? He just kind of belongs in those really bad uh, Legends of Wrestling pay-per-views like we saw uh, you know, where, the one where Jake Roberts was making snow, snake motions with his penis, like that's exactly yeah. where he probably belongs with the, the stuff he ends up with. I mean, I mean, we're just kind of happy WWE is going to hopefully rein in his shenanigans, right? Help me. Uh, yeah. Uh, would Rey Mysterio changing to a more mat based style after, say, his second knee surgery led him to not? Led, led to him not being as sad and shameful as he is now. To phrase it another way, if Mysterio were to alter the way he wrestled, would he not be so terrible these days? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think he just hasn't adapted well. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just think he's been doing his style for so long. That there's really nothing he can do about it, just because of the yeah. way he wrestles. And if he was a more map based guy, he wouldn't be nearly as interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think, like, I mean, all these guys toned down. I mean, you saw Samoa Joe toned down a bit when he came to TNA and, and had to do a little bit more, right? Um, and I think that's it. I think he, he, he's gone with that style. He, you've got something like the 619, which the kids love. So he's kind of more into the, you know, Less death defying and more making the kids happy. You know, you know, think Santino on Saturday morning slam, you know. Jessica, do you have any additional thoughts on that? Um, I was just gonna say, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's I think an issue is it's just he's been doing this for so long that it, it's hard to think of him not doing even the six one nine, but you know, I think if you know, like in two thousand, two thousand one, I don't know the exact timeline, but you know, if, if he would have started then you know, just to save his his knees, more more trauma. You know, it it'd be an easier transition now. Mm-hmm. But he definitely showed tried to branch out back then. Yeah, yeah. so maybe he didn't uh, didn't get into it like quick enough. And, and, and again, like when he got into WWE, he's probably still trying to prove something. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's before yeah. they really adapted everybody to the WWE style more directly, like they do now with like you know farming them through NXT. So, you know, maybe he didn't get to go through as much of that uh, to kind of save himself, you know. Um, because you got you to say, you know, yes, they've changed a lot. And there's actually a good talk about it on the uh, Mankind, I'm sorry, Mick Foley DVD about how they don't go full tilt like they used to because they want to actually be able to walk and wrestle for longer. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, but it's legit, right? You know, look well, at, I mean, yeah. also you have, to, you have to think about it. They don't have direct competition anymore, so they don't have to kill themselves on the ring every night. Exactly, exactly. So, so that's a thing too. So um, that doesn't stop some some that doesn't stop some guys though. But yeah, I, I no, get what you're no, of course, of course. <laughs> so, um, sorry, we got some weird stuff going on with the graphics. I uh, finish that <laughs> off there, LB. You have one. Okay. Well, I guess that's about it. I have to leaf on such a lackluster note but i feel if i keep going i would no longer be popular with you the wrestling mayhem show your friend leg kick teak ao if you guys didn't pick up uh, apparently lb is not a fan of puns and there's a pretty long line of it uh and the hangout last night so there was that so thank you for uh bringing that back around jessica <laughs> I will all yeah. always Thank you, bring Jessica to the Mayhem Show. For bringing that back to the show. <laughs> hey, we kept trying oh. to tell you to shrub it off. Oh, God dude. damn it! <laughs> wow. Wow, that's a thing. That's the thing that's happening. Um, all right, with that, we got one more here from our, our boy Dustin. Uh, he writes... <clears throat> Uh, dear Mayhemites, Mayhemites, dear Mayhemites, 
That's the right way to say that. Survivor Series has always been an interesting time of year for me. We are at the halfway point till Mania. With what we have seen so far, this is where I like to grade WWE on how well they have been doing in making me feel interested in their stories. They are building towards the mecca of sports entertainment, which I understand is almost sold out already. Um, so... So far this year, uh, they would receive a B from me. The major story of the Authority has lost my interest, but teasing the Shield implosion has, uh, uh, as well as the slow build to the Wyatts, has me quite interested. Uh, there are several scenarios that could lead into something great at Mania, but if we are judging on only what has uh, been presented as opposed to what we can conjure in our own minds, and WWE has done average in the past six months. True, true. Questions. Uh, you know what? Actually, uh, let's comment on that. Because I don't think any of his questions go directly off of this ha uh, halfway scenario. How do you feel they've gone in the last six months since uh, Mania? Me, I think there's been some some really good high points, including the John Cena Daniel Bryan situation. But then again, I feel everything's been tainted by Total Divas. <laughs> Speaking uh, of Total I, Divas, I Mad they're... Mike, you're the expert. Uh, they were they were doing pretty well up until SummerSlam, mm -hmm. but it seems like with Cena out, they didn't really plan for that. So they they were very stagnant because it, it didn't like if they want to give Daniel Bryan the big run, mm -hmm. it seems like they want to have him do it at WrestleMania, but then delaying it like every month in a row having him fight Randy Orton with no finish it seems like it really kind of halted their momentum i still feel like this was like another kind of test run for him um i mean you could say maybe he had one with the world championship before but i think this was a test run with this belt cm punk had a couple of these guys um i think you'll see punk uh, i'm sorry brian back bigger than ever and it will be at a mania if not this year and maybe the year after but i think he's still going to have a very high end appearance so uh, what about you lb um, I agree. Brian is so ridiculously popular that, I mean, he's, he's got to, he's established, you know? Yeah. It's sure. just a matter of not wasting what they've built by blowing their load too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, Jess? Um, I, I agree with, with the fact that he gave it a B. I wouldn't say B is average. I mean, I would, I would say a lower letter grade would be more average. But it's it's had some high points. They've kind of tread water a little bit in the past couple of months. And, you know, like you're saying with Orton versus Bryan so many times in a row. But or, or country night. They've done they've done they've done more good than than bad. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Now the actual questions. Then what do we even <laughs> invented in our own minds? Uh, number one, with Rey Mysterio returning on Raw, who can say uh, that you were very excited to see the return of the from injury at any point in wrestling history? Hmm. Oh, wait, say that again? I, I think I said that wrong. With Rey Mysterio returning on Raw, who can you say that you were very excited to see return from injury at any point in wrestling history? Oh, okay. Um, I, thought, I thought you said who can say. Like, the biggest one, probably just because we were in attendance, was when John Cena came back out of nowhere at Royal Rumble at Madison Square Garden. Uh, comes to my mind. And, Mike, I, I think you're in agreement with me on that. Yeah, definitely. That was, uh, just seeing that live was amazing. Yeah. It was just to see everything just explode uh, when that happened. Um, and then nothing else really comes to mind, maybe? Uh, oh, Edge. Oh, Shawn Michaels. Uh, we yeah, both had edge, a different maybe. one. Uh, so we all had the same time. Ed, edge return at Hell in a Cell when he was like the edge. cameraman out of so nowhere or something. or, uh, or He was a cameraman. Yeah, he was a cameraman, right? I, like, I feel like there was yeah. one where he just came out of the ring or something, too. But yeah. I think I'm thinking the cameraman one. Um, I'm, no, I'm sorry. You're, th you're thinking of the same. Um, it's the same event, or no? There was a there was a commercial where he uh, he took a chainsaw to the ring or something. Oh yeah, that was that was like the, another Survivor Series or something, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Jess, what do you oh, have? Shit. Yeah, I was gonna say Edge was was probably mine. Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, I was saying Shawn Michaels, SummerSlam 2002. Oh yeah, that'd be a ma that was a major comeback too because nobody thought he would come back. Like, period. Like he came back and was infinitely better than he was when he left. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. All thanks to DDP Yoga. 
I understand. <laughs> I gotta get back on that. I've been off it for like a month. Um, yeah, me too. Two, Kashi, we'll become yoga buddies. Not that we're gonna do yoga in the same place or anything like that, but just like yoga support Sorg, buddies. Sorg, I will. We can do nude hot yoga together, and it will be invigorating <laughs> and wonderful. Trust me. And Brokers. they'll be live streamed on SorgTimeMedia.com. <laughs> Yoga time with LB and Sorg. Moving on, please. <laughs> Number two, Cassia Zona was recently released to the dismay of many fans, except for those in Dragon Gate this past weekend, I suppose. Um, <laughs> if you could replace him with one talent not in the WWE, who would it be? Who would it be? Mm. Like, we're talking about anybody that, you know, I kind of had a similar question. Actually, I'll bring that up. Because remember, I, I posed a question earlier this week of who currently in TNA would you think would be better off in WWE? I think that's kind of a connector question there. Um, and, I, and I'll see if I can pull up those answers as well. But but who would you want, who do you think is like a good one should be pulled up from the indies or something uh, uh, to replace kind of his spot, yeah, at least his placeholder spot in NXT? Uh, what, what do you think, Jessica? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the dumb answer I was going to go with was e Ethan Carter. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe. It doesn't have to be TNA. Uh, no, no, I was maybe, uh, maybe Chuck Taylor, even though that would, that would mean no more 24 seven, uh, hardcore defenses. And you would hope yeah, they would let him I go. I don't think they'd let him do that. Like, I, I could see him being, like, what yeah. Derek Bateman was for, like, NXT. You know? He would be the yeah. next tout man. Um, definitely. Definitely. What do you think, uh, Mike? Uh, well, if I had to pick anyone, I would like to see Facade. Yeah. I think he would prosper in NXT very well. I wonder how he would – you think in NXT – like I, I just I just wonder like I could see him in TNA, but I, I wonder about his style in WWE. I, I, I don't think he would be the neon ninja, which is a shame because he's done a lot with that. Like I think he's done really well to build that kind of character here on the indies, you know. Um uh, I don't know. He's he's got a very interactive gimmick though. Yeah, he does. Oh for sure. Like and you can you can bring that into Instagram and Twitter immediately, like just having start tagging people's bags and stuff yeah, like that. I, yeah, it seems like an NXT gimmick. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could very well be, and they could maybe morph that into something a little more thought out too. Uh, what about you, LB? You got anybody in mind? Uh, I have always, since the first time I saw him, been very impressed with Davy Richards. Uh, I think that he would fit well in the WWE. I mean, he's a shorter guy, but he's a fucking mountain of muscle. So yeah. that's uh, that's where I would go. I think guys like Chris Benoit have, have proven that can work. Because mm -hmm. like, really, I mean, he is the next Chris Benoit. Uh, from the Facebook, again, for that like kind of TNA question, I think we can kind of relate to that. Uh, Alex actually asked if all of them were acceptable. Um, uh Missy, sorry, somebody's messaging me. Uh, Chachi, stop it. Yeah, you should mute that, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to, but I was, it's complicated with a voicemail I'm trying to play uh, and prepare for. Uh, a new commenter, Missy, in there actually says Austin Aries. I agree with that. Another smaller but talented guy I think should come up. Somebody, Alex said Shark Boy. Uh, He's going to be on Impact, apparently. Is he? Good. He released an Impact 365 video nice. of him quitting his job and saying he's going back to Impact. <laughs> what was his job? I, I don't know. I didn't watch the video. I'm assuming I'm hoping something was, to do with shrimp boats. I was hoping he just had a game stop or something. I assume Sunglasses Hut. <laughs> That's where no, that out. was uh, Angelia Love, I think. No, that was uh, actually oh Taylor Wilde. It was, it was oh, so Taylor Wilde, but I assumed... I assume all TNA employees have at least a part-time gig at Sunglass Hut. Exactly. Uh, Kazarian and Daniel were brought up. They're, hey, they're entertaining as all hell. Uh, Will, I'm with you on Michael Q. Knoxville. Uh, yes. A lot of comments in there. Uh, so go check that out over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group on the Facebook uh, groups uh, as well. So we do have a voicemail, and I'll take care of that. Stop messaging me, all you people. Matt, Chachi, <laughs> Bobby. Ah, uh, sorry, I, I had to pull this up on on, on Jessica's. So, um, and they changed everything. Thank you for that, Google. 
They, no, stop it. Ah. <laughs> this is technically a, okay. Now they're doing it. Now they're doing it on purpose. Yes. Oh, man. Sorry, so it's I, funny because I muted my iPad so I can see the whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, I've got my iPhone here, so. Sorry, I'm having. And I tell them to stop, but then it would just ding in your ears again. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't contribute to it. I'm not going to. Woo! There it is. It is Bo, fucking diggity. Now, I know that was kind of quiet. That's because I'm at home, and it's nine o'clock at nine thirty. Okay. Uh, and I don't want to wake my child. Nope. I have a fear of him. I fear. If there's anything in life I fear, it's I fear. I fear a child waking up. So I have to be quiet. Anyways. Uh, I just wanted to point out uh, that I still hate Rey Mysterio, and I hope uh, that if he had a match at WrestleMania, that he would wrestle. Um, he would wrestle like Cesaro, and then when he goes for the six one nine, like Zeb Coulter runs around the ring and jabs a dildo like right in his butthole, what? and and Ray uh, <laughs> screams in horror, uh, and then Zeb Coulter calls him one of the gays and tells him to get out of this country. What? And then screams, we the people in his face. And then it would be awesome. Uh, I apparently saw a Bobby, or Bobby FJ Town, sent us a report that said that Ray Mysterio was limping around the ring and going up the ramp last night. And thus, the fruit roll-up knees theory is correct. Um, <laughs> there will be no more, uh, hopefully there will be no more Ray Mysterio. But there will be. And I'll still be sad until he's gone. This has been Bo fucking diggity. The F... Is for fruit roll ups. Your fucking knees are made of fruit roll ups, Rey Mysterio. You cocksucking fuckface. God, I hate you. Wow. So angry at that masked man. Um, so that there's that. Uh, uh, we can talk about Rey Mysterio, I think, a little later. You know, I never finished that other email. You never finished the email, Sorg. <laughs> Thank you. you goofed. Thank you for that. Uh, we did have another question uh, with Kane and Big Show, and I have included Kali in this group. Getting closer to retirement every year, who do you see filling the big man role in the next five years? Some big man that we have not heard of yet. Actually, actually, there is a big guy, I can't remember his name on NXT, that they're really kind of putting over as... as oh, they Whoa, uh, like, Mike, we just lost your thing. Big Cass? Or are you thinking of someone else? What's that? What did you say, Jess? Hmm? I, was, I was saying, are you talking about Big Cass? Or are you yeah. someone else? I think it's Big Cass. He was like kind of barefoot or something like that. Kind of came out and destroyed somebody. Right? No, that, that'd probably be Rusev. Uh, a big Russian correctly. dude. Yeah, yeah, Alexander Rusev. Yeah, yeah. I, I like. I, I, I did see a report. I think they were talking about him. Uh, it's saying that he's probably going to be fast tracked to the big roster because you know they they want big guys. You know, uh, there's a discussion. I don't know how true it is, but this discussion of um, we think the ratings were down because we had small guys like uh, Daniel Bryan up top. So, and that's why you're seeing a big push of like Big Show and stuff like that. I don't know. That's dirty talk. So who knows? But uh, to finish this off for me. I say uh, it is Luke Harper. I even think Harper and Rowan. I mean, Harper has been ridiculously good lately, right? So, um, seeing if that is still working yeah. over there, um, but uh, yeah, for sure, uh, and, and definitely this this big push to put them with uh, Brian and Punk to make them look better. Hey, LB, are you with me? I did something weird with your audio. Yeah, I'm still here. All right, double checking. Um, uh, his match with the recently released Cassius Ohno on NXT was an amazing example of just how dominant of a presence he has in the ring. Harper with the right push can be a long-standing name in the WWE for years to come. I hope you guys have another great podcast and that LB's mic doesn't skip out as much as it did last week. Regards, Dustin. You're doing good so far, hey. sir. Yeah. Your luck, Dustin. You need to <laughs> listen to my smooth, sensual tones um, all through the show. We got Mike back. Uh, looks like via mobile device. Are you with us, sir? Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened. I know. That, we're having but... problems with that a bit. We're going to have to uh, sit down and, and, and figure that out sometime in the near future. So, um, And, of course, it's the weirdest thing is the way they're doing Hangouts now. And now your face, like, 
is all over the screen and I can only take a section, so that's fun too. Uh, so technology, ladies and gentlemen, but it's podcast. I was live. I was trying to say Rusev is the guy in NXT. Rusev, thank yeah, well, yeah, yeah, he yeah. beat up Dolph Ziggler like a month and a half ago or something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jess helped me out with that one. Uh, all right, so with that, it is time to check out. Uh, this is going to be fun, guys. It's the Indie Minute. And we have no, of course, Russell fan with us to do this. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Actually, he left me notes. He left me notes of uh, uh, things that you guys should be checking out. Um, of course, uh, first of all, big announcement here locally, IWC Wrestling, uh, did, did announce, uh, your teacher, former WWE star, Matt Stryker, will be here in December, uh, for the next Winner Takes All show. We'll be there, uh, and it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun stuff. He's gonna be doing, I think, a seminar and announcing, and he's gonna have a match. So he's doing triple duty that night, guys. Uh, so, uh, check out IWCWrestling.com for any information. Uh, upcoming on that. I know they've been announcing stuff on their Twitter, and yeah, there's the announcement right there from Matt Stryker on their website, so go go scope that out and details on what's going on there. Um, other news from that camp, we just got a thing. Uh, IWC Wrestling will now be available uh, very shortly, if not already, on Smartmark Video On Demand, so go a uh, new way for you guys to get those shows that I know we talk about a lot out here. Uh, another show coming up is 2CW. Uh, I actually uh, caught wind of this show uh, yesterday. I think Dalton Castle had, had put me on the invite uh, list for it, but I know it's not in the area. Up in uh, uh, Bingham, Watertown, New York, they got a couple big shows uh, this Friday, November 22nd, and Saturday, November 23rd. Big matches including Kevin Steen against friend of the show, Johnny Gargano, Edwards and Strong against, uh, I'm presuming these are more local guys, Van Slyke and Graham. Uh, I know two guys that just popped up on the show I was editing for uh, last week's RWA show. Um, Team CK, I think they're, they're called. Uh, they are former if not current uh uh tag team champions with this group so uh, some local guys uh, more local guys getting involved with these ones um they also have some other stuff uh uh colin delaney is going to be a part of that second show again johnny gargano um a lot of big names uh, 2cw is definitely a show that i've heard about here and there uh, these are going to be on iPay-Per-View. i think both shows are going to be on iPay-Per-View from the looks of it if not, at least one right here. Live, free iPay-Per-View, actually, Saturday, November 23rd. So if you want to sample them, that's cool. Uh, it's called 99 Problems, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can check that out at, well, the site is livesportsvideo.com for the stream. But, of course, their site, if I can get back to it, I believe it's just 2CW, 2CW Wrestling, the number 2CW Wrestling.com. So go check that out. Um, also, some big stuff coming up November 23rd. If you're in the uh, Reading, PA area, the other side of the state, peel slowly and see. Wrestling is fun. You can check out more information on that, wrestlingisfun.org. They're not dead yet like all the other Chikara guys. Also, Pro Wrestling is Respect. Another uh, spinoff has got a show coming up also uh, November 24th. And uh, finally, I, this is a new one. I, I presume because we're trying to get, like I said, new some new uh, groups uh, uh, to talk about on here. Uh, VWA, uh, VWAA Wrestling, um, which stands for, I had it here, I think he has it in my note. Uh, Vanguard Wrestling All-Star Alliance, Addison, Illinois, uh, coming up November uh, uh, 24th as well, big show. Uh, they're also available on uh, Smart Mark Video On Demand and everything. I got somebody's TV, by the way. Somebody out there. Um, so go check them out at VWAAWrestling.com. And that is your Indie Minute. Um, so with that, hey, you know, we got an app. And LB, why don't you tell me what they're going to expect on that app? Oh, man. Let me tell you about this app, sir. First off, it's a dollar ninety-nine. That's a steal for any app. That's a steal for to just show you, you pictures of kittens. But we've got so much better than pictures of kittens. kittens. Kitten pictures are bullshit compared to what we have. What we have is the behind-the-scenes look at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Something special that we do just for the app called Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. You want to know what happens before the show, after the show, around the show? When we're not doing the show, it's right fucking there. Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. It is incredible. And we also give you unprecedented access to each and every format 
of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You want to watch us, see our beautiful faces? Of course you do. We're all sex machines of the highest caliber. Go check it out. It's on the app. Don't have time to watch us? You know, boss getting a little hinky about you watching fucking YouTube videos on your phone? Well, you should be because you have a job to do. But you can do that job while listening to us at the same time. Pop in your headphones, plug it in, and listen to the audio version of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, it is the best app. It is available for your Android device, for your iOS device, for your – is it – it's for almost everything. Do you have a BlackBerry? Shut no. the fuck up. No. Don't fucking listen to us if you have BlackBerry. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Everyone else, download the app. $1.99, best money you ever spent. I Promise. All right, and let's take a look at a little uh, peek at what we're doing with that this week and a little peek at some other wrestling, and we'll be right back uh, with Remember What. <laughs> Bobby, you should stick around. Hey, come on, we're just... <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Oh, I can't leave you! <laughs> Fuck! Yes! Fuck! Yes! <laughs> The unmutable Bobby F.J. Town. I'll mute he myself. He survived the flood. <laughs> Good job. Turn just, me down some more. Just, just as I can yeah. turn Bobby down, don't, I can turn don't. Zorg up. It's the don't, internet. Don't turn um, me down. We're here at WrestleCon in... We're here in WrestleCon in Secaucus, New Jersey. My guest at this time, one of the most legendary journalists in wrestling history, Mr. Bill Apter. Bill, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you standing by my side. It is a pleasure and honor to be speaking with you on all your uh, uh, sending the message out to your millions and millions of viewers. We'll get there. But we're here in New Jersey. We're here at WrestleMania weekend, the biggest weekend of the year for the industry to do some investigating and figure out what exactly everybody's Montreal theories are. Could Bret Hart have been in on it? Could it have been a work from day one? How much? To what degree? We have a panel of a dozen people spending hours talking about it. And it's only right that I present a copy here to Mr. Bill Apter. And to get Bill Apter's thoughts on this, because... Do you take credit card, or...? We do take credit card, but you don't have to pay for that. You don't have to... Really? No. Thanks. Complimentary on the house. Thank you so much. I think you've earned it after all of us have grown up with you, with the Apter mags. I may by give the you... Way, by the way, I thank you for saying that, but I was one guy on a team of dozens of people that put that magazine together, but I was the guy out in the front lines. So I should, I should have copies for, like, Matt Brock and Liz Hunter and everybody else? Well, at least for Stu Sachs and Craig Peters and Brandy Mankiewicz and Dan Shockett, who's no longer with us. He uh, died at a very young age of uh, cancer. Certainly a great publication. Their, their memories will be with us for a long, long time. First bad guy reporter. There you go. After his passing, Eddie Elner took that call. Well, some people may consider me a bad guy reporter based on some of the subject matter in here, but you have an opinion. You have your own theory. What is your theory on Montreal? First, I'll say it in my Bret Hart imitation. You know, they said to me... No, that's it. My opinion from that day on was who was in on it. My Totally non-educated. Nobody told me this. I think that WWE was in a bad financial state at that time, and they had to lose Bret Hart. And I think, again, my opinion, that all the people involved in that knew that that was going to take place. Fits like a perfect story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's my opinion. I could be 100% wrong. I could be 50% wrong. But that's my opinion. There's a lot of other people that, that agree with you, though, and one of them that we talk about briefly on this DVD is Jerry the King Lawler. We have some footage from an interview that he did, and, and it's very interesting because I'm sure you were covering back in the day when something similar happened with Jerry Lawler and the late great Andy Kaufman. Uh, well, I was. do you know that I was the guy who put them together? I, I did not know, know that. You did not know that. So Andy Kaufman used to come to... Uh, the garden on uh, the once a month Monday nights, and Vince McMahon Sr. didn't want him involved at all. He was so anti-Hollywood back then still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he came over to me. He knew who I was, Andy Kaufman. And after the matches, he came back to my apartment on the subway. This is when he was a big star on Taxi. And people were talking to him. And that night at about 1 a.m. in the morning, I said, you know what? I got a friend in... Memphis, they're way ahead of the curve. His name is Jerry Lawler. I'm going to call him. He says, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. So he's a wrestler. He's just getting up. He's just coming in. So we called him. They got on the phone. And that's how everything started. 
in all the books on Jerry Lawler, I'm credited with that. Tremendous. Well, certainly you've been very instrumental in some major, major incidents in pro wrestling. And Absolutely. And, and uh, thank you very much, Montreal, the Montreal Theory. The Montreal Theory. And I'm going to go home and check this out. And you can check it out on MontrealTheory.com. Purchase your copy, DVD, or digital download, and let us know your theory, because now you know Bill Apters. Yeah, what, what is your theory? Hmm. stars and garters holy shit the montreal theory that was absolutely incredible go and pick it up today folks it's that time on here on the wrestling mayhem show we take a little trip down memory lane in a little segment that i personally and you definitely like to call remember when remember when we're gonna remember again. Not too many things remind her of rhyme with when, when, again, again, again. Oh, my bad. Okay, uh, so uh, the, the Miz last night on Raw, he turned heel. Nobody really cared. Uh, but there was a time when turning heel meant something. Uh, and uh, I won't fucking talk about that. That is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about uh, remembering uh, great heel turns. Uh, in the world, and um, I will kick things off with uh, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, Brett the Hitman Hart. He turned heel. Uh, just, I was absolutely blown away. I didn't think it was possible. My young, uh, child-like, booze-addled mind uh, could not comprehend that Bret Hart was now a heel, but you know what? He won me over. He won me over, and I was on his side. I would say that Bret Hart was probably the first heel that I sympathized with and liked uh, as a heel just as much as I liked as a face, which is now fairly pretty common. Uh, so that's mine, Bret the Hitman Hart, when he, uh, when he turned heel. Sorglestein! Um, you know, probably not the best. Probably, probably the most, uh, I will say the second most significant. Uh, was, uh, because I, I want to leave this for somebody else. Uh, uh, but when Stone Cold turned and aligned with Vince, you know, I, I know it didn't turn into a long standing great thing, but then again, without that, we wouldn't have had him and Kurt Angle singing to each other later on. Um, but that, like that WrestleMania and seeing him turn and everything like that was, uh, pretty like, you know, incredible. Did not see that coming moment. Cause if I recall, it didn't seem like. Both like the, a rock and Stone Cold were both coming from a not heel respecting each other kind of thing, right? And then yeah, like, they're both faces, and they kind of teased Rock kind of going over the end into the middle of the match, and maybe saying, "What am I got to do to put him out?" And then it go it went the other way, you know, until you know Stone Cold did go that extra that extra uh, uh, bit for it. Um, so I and I don't know. I, I think I think that was still a, a very very significant. Um, you know, kind of moment in that. So, what about you, Mad Mike? Uh, well, I honestly couldn't. I was trying to think of one, and then LB reminded me of one of my favorite heel turns when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. and that would be Owen Hart at the Royal Rumble, I believe, in I want to say '95, where it was. Brett and Owen Hart going for the tag titles against the Quebecers. It might have even been 93. I'm not sure. It's one of the... Um, actually, no. It was 94. Sorry. Anyways, it happened. Trying to get my... Uh, but <laughs> Owen Hart was wrestling the whole match, basically, because Brett's leg was injured. And after the match, uh, Brett tagged himself in. Mm -hmm. They lost. And Owen Hart got so mad, he kicked out his own brother's leg. And just start beating him up, and it was amazing. And it was cemented that night when Brett won the Royal Rumble, and Owen was just staring at him from the entrance way. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jess? He kicked his leg out of his leg. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have to go with a uh, a heel turn on an epic proportion. That's when Sergeant Slaughter turned his back mm -hmm. on the entire American people mm -hmm. the flag and flag on fire. With Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> He was a G.I. Joe, for God's sakes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> on after that. I mean, 
come on. I had his action figure. A funny story about uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Yes. One of my buddies who's not a wrestling fan <clears throat> saw him at New York Comic Con and said, wow, he looks exactly like the G.I. Joe figure I have of him right now. <laughs> <laughs> he does a little bit though. Uh, uh, Bobby, Bobby, you joined us here uh, um, uh, in, the, in the break. What, what, what about you? I'm gonna go with the one that, like everybody goes with. But it's like, you, how can you help it? It's like my favorite heel turn of all time. Shawn Michaels throwing Marty Jannetty through the barbershop window. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a website named Barbershop Window where you can buy T-shirts. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Riz, it's Riz like has one of the biggest the, heel turns. And, and Riz has know, all the and, pink ones. Yeah. And, <laughs> He does have a pink one, um, and uh, it's just it, it'll go down as as probably my favorite heel turn of all time. Any any time that WWE makes little kids cry, it, it's <laughs> it's okay in my books. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Wills? Well, see, I knew everybody was going to go for the simplest one of Shawn Michaels and stuff like that. I went a different direction. I went with Hulk Hogan turning on. The wrestling fans respect and joining with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. I was wondering. I, I figured someone would have to come around to that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. Oh, that was big. And that was. Um, and and I, I, I still go back to. But I just got back into wrestling. We just started watching WCW when like Scott Hall started coming out, and like I think one of our first pay per views was like that one when they turned, and it just blew. You know. I watched Hulk Hogan, you know, growing up with my dad for, you know, what, 10 years at that point, And just, it just like, what is this shit going on here? Um, and yeah, they, it was, it was a tremendous moment. Um, on the chat room. Yeah, AJ had a good one. AJ had a good one. Uh, AJ had one. I was in attendance. For. Mine was, mine is when Crush turned on Macho Man, hurt my fucking soul. A line yeah, with that no good Mr. Fuji and Yokozuna, <laughs> like you threw salt in my heart crush. Macho Man never had, never had shit. Yes. Yeah, Ooh, I, I was there for that. that, that was, was a, and that was a great, like, Falls Count Anywhere match at WrestleMania, right? Yes, it was. I followed up on that. Yeah. So, good times. Good and time. it's disappointing because Crush was such a good guy. I mean, remember when he went after Doink's like, you're making kids cry, brah. Yeah, <laughs> what a crush, man! <laughs> loved it, loved it. Um, so let us know. Let, let us know what you think. We're uh, great heel turns. Let us know over on the Facebook group, group Wrestling Mayhem Show. Let us know on comments to this video and everything like that. But now, guys, tell you about some T-shirts. Hey, I got a good old T-shirt. Some old uh, two tickets to Larry Dice, old timey. Uh, but we want to talk to you about new T-shirts. ProWrestlingTees.com. A lot of friends of. The shows and everything are on here these days. Zima Ion, Shima Zion has some t-shirts on here now. Um, um, if you get let go by uh, WWE, you get one pretty quick on here, it sounds like, too. Uh, but we got our own wrestling te- ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS for the Wrestling Mayhem Show store on here. We got some great stuff. The WMS logo so you can represent. Uh, property of WMS and the great good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times! Uh, thank, thank, good thank, times. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, good times! These two, of course, designed by the great Alex Cars, who's done some great stuff, including uh, T-shirts for uh, uh, Steve the Turtle Whiner, amongst other things. Uh, good times. I, yeah, well, wait, you're late. You're late. You're on oh. the late. You're not doing <laughs> oh, I missed it. You did it wrong. You did it wrong. I missed it. Um, so uh, go go check out that. And, of course, while you're there, of course, they got plenty of stuff. Uh, from a lot, of, a lot of the names, including like Gold Dust, DDP. I think there might be a Jake Roberts one might have popped on here recently. Um, and they got some links. Chris Hero, of course. Again, I mentioned about people just getting let go. Um, all kinds of great stuff. So go check it out, ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, Sorg. But, yes. Guess what? Hmm. I am literally purchasing one right now. What are you getting? I'm getting a Property of Mayhem shirt. Yeah. What? That I'm going to wear on camera at TNA's pay-per-view. Nice. What? 
<laughs> well, well you'll, it's easy to be on camera because you'll be one of seven in attendance. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least, but, but he represents. Wear them to your indie shows. Wear them when you get on those awesome seats in the front row at Raw. Hey, I'm going to be wearing one. We're going to get some pretty decent seats on camera side uh, for the Royal Rumble here coming up. And I don't know, maybe the property of Mayhem Show might be a good one. Maybe the logo, I don't know. Uh, just represent, you know. I, I wanted to get to the point where we see those. We're starting to spot those in the in the crowd, uh, so we know that you're part of the Mayhem Army here. Uh, so go, go check that out. ProWrestlingTees.com, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, or go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and we got a great link right there, as well as links to all the uh, App Store locations where you can find the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app we talked about before. So let's get our discussion. Um, how did we enjoy, we talked about it a little bit last night, of course, on the wrap-up, but how did we enjoy uh, the uh, Raw Country? It, uh, it didn't really deliver on its premise. It had, yeah, it had a country music thing like one performance by some assholes but um aside from that what was very country about it um i mean we had like the music in and out was just kind of you know country vignettes i guess um but we had we had a themed match with sandow and and ziggler which was entertaining um we did not get a stink with a cowboy hat like botch spot was calling for we did not get Road Dog singing with my baby tonight. He teased it too, didn't he? Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I was um, very upset about that. We did get divas who didn't know what they were doing. That's yeah, true. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah true. musical chairs. If there's Come divas. On. That's what we're getting. That somehow got spun into a Survivor Series match. Yeah. Like a, a Survivor, Survivor Series, Series match. Was gonna happen anyway, though. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still going to be like three minutes because it's Divas, right? Um, they're just going to get in a cat fight and I'll get disqualified, probably. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. Soul Survivor. Sadly, Eva Marie and JoJo will probably still be undefeated. Ah, oh, no. I think JoJo is going to be the sole Survivor. It's my thoughts, too. I hope <laughs> not. It, it is and it's really weird because it is, isn't it um, um, uh, Total Divas versus everybody else? Yep. Um, come on, guys. I, I mean, but still, I'm I'm like happy to see that there is another Survivor Series match on top of being a women's Survivor Series match, which I don't think we've had one of those in a while. I don't know how the lame Survivor Series matches became the ladies' one from like '89 uh, when we were looking at those on the on the site. Uh, but still, I, 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 it happens. Um, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Yeah. One of the things I enjoyed was them referencing Double J a lot during the Sandow uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler match. But didn't he like kind of stop mid mid sentence? Yeah. <laughs> on that yeah. one, like, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about Double J on here. Uh, but they have to, right? Even even uh, Ziggler did the try. Yeah. So yeah. terribly, <laughs> which was great. Overselling the strut like everything else, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it, I, I think it was a fun night for that. Just not in the country. The thing that amazed me, like I think this is the the time, you know, Asian family included. Thank you, Jessica, for that gift. Um, <laughs> that was the best part of Raw. But typically, when you had a music artist and somebody made a comment somewhere along the line of this being the most contemporary music act that they've ever had on WWE, most of the time when there's like the music act. Most of the crowd does not give a crap, especially oh, when they have the rap artists, because yeah. most of them, I'm pretty sure most of the crowd in most of the places we're going to have wrestling does not attract the hip hop uh, uh, demographic for the most part. Right. Um, I, I, even if you're in a city, I think it's mostly bringing the people from the boons. Um, that's the feeling <laughs> I get in Pittsburgh. Can you back me up on that, LB? You're absolutely right. <laughs> there, when when WWE comes to town, you will see people in Pittsburgh who uh, don't come to the city for any other reason. You will see people yep. in Pittsburgh who are just terrified of anybody darker than tan. It's, uh, it's <laughs> but it, I mean, it's I wouldn't true. know. It's, it's, it's true, true though, because wow. I mean. I mean, back in the day, like like LB, I, and I don't know if you know, well, I don't think you made it up here for shows because you're from out there too. But uh, I'm an hour and a half from Pittsburgh where I grew up, and I would come down for something like a wrestling show, a a, a, a rap show, you know, or, or or something, a rock show or something. Um, so 
you know, it's wrestling, guys. It's wrestling. You know, a country is probably the closest thing. I, I, I kind of joke, but kind of serious. I, I can't wait for the all NASCAR episode. And I know they've done some stuff before, but but it's the thing that makes most sense with the demographic. And I know LB agrees with me. Yeah, actually, I do. Um, but it's it, it's it's similar, but it's still very different. If you've ever been to a live NASCAR event, it's um, a lot of the people look very much the same as you'll see at a wrestling event, a NASCAR event. Uh, but at a NASCAR event, there are hundreds, and I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of thousands more. Yeah, exactly. There is literally millions of dollars more changing hands at a NASCAR show than at a wrestling event. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just fucking frenzy. There, there's nobody in, a par in the parking lot of a WWE Raw event selling bootleg t-shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they are fucking rampant at NASCAR events. So, yeah. Well, um, what anything else pop up? I know. I think we we're pretty much distracted trying to get through all the country and listening to Amen talk about supermarket sweep and and <laughs> duck penises and and all that kind of stuff. Did anything else uh, really stick out from last night? Of course, Some tremendous. Um, holy crap! That main duck of penises <laughs> stick out. <laughs> <laughs> Nine inches, nine inches, nine inch duck penises and corkscrew. Somebody let Torito out of his cage and he was undressed. Oh, wait, that was Rey Mysterio. Mm, we talked about a <laughs> no, little bit before. Your statement's still true. I mean, it, it seems like a weird time for Rey Mysterio to come back, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, well, we did have him on yeah. commentary a few months ago and we insisted that he was El Torito uh, somehow. Uh, that, that was pretty entertaining. Uh, JBL, I love old man crazy JBL. You know, like he's better than Waller. Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It was just because he's something different, and I know he's going to wane mm -hmm. on us, like you know, eventually too. But uh, JBL genuinely seems like he's having fun, even when mm -hmm. he's wrong. Is my interpretation. Even, even when he had the com compliment uh, Florida Georgia line, and he like smiled, and then his smile slowly faded away. <laughs> 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 I loved that. I was. He was like, they were great. Mm, I don't know. It's, really. It kind of seems like he's having a little too much fun, no? You because think so? you can tell that there, there's a lot of times during commentary where they have like in jokes, yeah, that no one else knows about. But again, I go back to they just have too much time out there, and they forget that they're on TV. I really that's think that's true. it. I mean, I think they're. I think it's just to a point where they are too comfortable out there. Uh, and forget that they're supposed to be doing a show and supposed to be delivering content. But you got to think, I mean, talk for three, four hours and see mm -hmm. how well you can keep it together, guys. We can't yeah. do it for three hours during <laughs> Raw. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Plus, they go and they Damon go talked about the market <laughs> sweep for damn near a half hour last night. He did. Oh, he did. boy, I mean, where granted, are we? It was excellent insight into Supermarket Sweep, but and still. a little bit of insight into his how his brain works. Um, <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got one from – what was Matt saying about the NASCAR comment here? Let me pull it up on one that I can read. I've uh, been to NASCAR races, and I can tell you that for certain, the rest, uh, the wrestling are, are, are much – fans are much more friendly and easy to hang out with. Um, and you're making kids That's cry. That's true. Uh, and there's a lot of yelling going on in the chat room right now. Uh, Jess, should I be concerned about this? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's happening? Did you click the link? I didn't click the link. Should I click the link? Yes, you should click the link. Click okay. You should click the fucking link. Hold on. Load the link. <laughs> oh my God. What's... You oh are welcome. Oh, my God. It's the greatest thing of all time. Oh, is that from SmackDown tonight? That looks like it's from SmackDown tonight. What does that say? The Fabulous Three Birds? The Fabulous nice. Three Birds. What? Oh, let's talk about what? this phenomenon. What's happening? Last week, last week they came out, 3MB came out as the Union Jacks. This week yes. they were, what was they called again? The the, the Rhinestone Cowboys. Rhinestone Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah. Rhinestone now Cowboys. apparently in, what are they, it's in Long Island? Wait, no, that's not right. No. Really? No. Raws and Long Island. They're, they're still somewhere around Nashville, probably. And they're the fabulous yeah. three birds. I think they're in Atlanta. They they're down in Atlanta. Atlanta. Three birds. They're the fabulous three birds. I think they're in Bad Street, USA, guys. <laughs> I think well, they're in I'm Bad on board. Street. But I, this, is, this is exactly what they need to do. They're a comedy act, and they're being... 
one, inventive, you know, they can't do this forever, but they'll probably maybe do this at least for one loop around of uh, all the towns so we can get six months of stuff out of this, right? I mean, well, what? I mean, who said last night that last night they should be um, run 3MB on Raw? Yeah, when they come in, when yeah. they come to town up there. Or the 3MB Sea Boys. Yes. I'm trying to think of what music comes out of Pittsburgh. I was, I was just Wiz thinking Khalifa? that. I'm like, what are they going to do? Wiz, yeah. Or Mac Miller. The only thing I can Mac think Miller. of is Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> Khalifa. Sorg, they'll probably just be like the Steel City Singers or something. There you go. There you go. I mean, I can think of a few things, but they're kind of like local and old-timey. I don't know. If, um, if, if WWE mm-hmm. ever goes to, like, Detroit, they could be Kiss. Oh, my God, yes. I love this idea. <laughs> I love this idea. Keep it going. Good, good for 3MB, right? They have a spot. You know they're jobbers, but come on, there's, there's still this might get them over. Still something. And Jinder yeah. Mahal, you make such a convincing cowboy. What the hell? Sword. <laughs> that is, he had more he's tassels than he's girls an like. Indian, so it makes sense that he's a good cowboy. It's I Ginger love when they were Mahal. like, yeah, y'all are from Nashville, and Jinder Mahal was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I Isn't his to... name Ginger though? Ginger. Yeah, Ginger. You should just make it Ginger at this point, really. Um, so Survivor Series. Unless you guys have got anything else to mention about Raw, actually, it's probably wow. It looks pretty full now that they have all those names in there. Um, of course, the base stuff. Randy Orton against the Big Show for the belt. Hmm. This is a placeholder match. Big Show's not getting that. Unless. No way. Unless. Survivor Series is known for the screw drops. True. If you remember the Deadly Game Tournament. Yes. The McMahon no, remembers the Deadly Game Tournament. I remember the Deadly Game. It had its own theme song. It's a Deadly two, Game. Okay, two people. Two people remember the Deadly Game Tournament, and they are both named Mike. Yes. Hey, <laughs> Mike High Five. <laughs> Mike High Five. <laughs> <laughs> but if um, they decide to flip flop Show and Orton, that could be interesting. Wow. Okay, so they flip flop, and then you got Big Show and Kane are the new not brothers of destruction. What they call themselves before, but they tag team again, but they're wearing suits. Yes. You could oh, call. So them you're Big saying and that Big Show, Big Show, take the place of Randy Orton. Yeah, in Triple H's good graces. They, yeah, yeah. Now that would be interesting. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're teasing the dissension with Randy Orton, but they're also kind of teasing dissension with the Shield too. So, I mean, everything. Like, what do you do when everything implodes? You just kind of fill all the spots. Maybe the Wyatts become the new Shield in a weird, freaky, diggy way. Um, they, yeah, they 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 turn on Randy Orton, so then he can be battling against the Authority, and he's already got the taped rib, so he'd be full on DDP now. <laughs> <laughs> he could he, he could get some he could get some like denim trunks because we know he doesn't have pants. He can't wear jeans, but he can at least get some denim trunks. Aww. Randy Orton and Denim Schwartz. Him and John Cena could form a tag team of the Jorts. Oh, no. oh man. <laughs> I don't like any of these ideas. Oh. No. <laughs> I don't I don't like them, but my thing is that Randy Jortons. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, Jordan, John Cena and Alberto Del Rio. Um I, what do you think we're gonna do with this one? Uh it it, it things. I don't know. Malcina wins. Yeah, yeah Cena's Cena gonna win. Cena wins. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, like, you know, against all odds, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, uh, the, Rio the, the Rio. match, I believe. Unless Nikki screws him over because she had to sign a cohabitation yeah. agreement. <laughs> and, oh, I didn't watch yeah, the like, this week. Yeah. Del Rio is just like, I'll offer you wings of my mansion, Nikki. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't cry and drive. Uh, that's what's gonna happen on Killer Dina's next week. I don't know Range Rovers to give her though. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, of course, no Range Rovers in Mexico. Like going to the match really tired because like a distinct buzzing kept him up all night. (laughs) That whole bag. Oh god. That that was six distinct. No, no, no. You have to watch the episode. Yes. I'm not gonna watch the episode. <laughs> Nikki I brought a lot. Yet, and <laughs> Good man. Good man. She, she brought a lot of vibrators. 
Uh, a lot of them. I mean, I, I didn't watch it though. Like, like I'm envisioning she just like showed up with a, a giant paper bag and like emptied it on the bed, and it was just a bunch of them. And a couple of them maybe were running or something. Well, no, yeah, one one went vision. off. One went off. Okay. It sounded like it sounds like in, a gun. In I know. One box. went off. In a cardboard <laughs> and box. And then John's like, "Put those yeah. things away," and she puts them in this like giant purse. <laughs> Put those things like, away. Like it was, it was, it was basically a magic act. She had a box, I, and like more just kept coming out. It was endless. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> like, how does this? Like, like. Not, okay. I have she a was line low. Of she didn't children. have anyone I have else a line for so long. Children's clothing at Target. Herself. I can't have my girlfriend showing off her dildos on national television. <laughs> no, it's Kmart, so it's okay. It means the stuff's gonna show up in the Spanish version of Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> I guess it. I guess it makes sense. In a couple of years, when they fire the Bellas, they'll have their own flashlights, and it all comes. So it can't be a Supermarket Sweep because mm. you're you're only allowed five of one item. She had six. Yeah. Are you all right over there, <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? Jessica can't deal. We're going to lose the only uh, person that can explain to me if this is a, lo- a way that people usually carry their dildos. Oh, wait a minute. Why <laughs> sixth one? You think, you think wow. Jessica's the only way that can ex- person that can explain that to you? What, are you the expert? <laughs> sure. I was hoping Have you would... We met. I assumed you meant LB. <laughs> I was hoping LB would be like, I dabble. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, so uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get back to wrestling. <laughs> the wrestling. Or, like, people have a very the tasteful last pillow minutes. that has a zipper on it, and they fill it with that. It looks like a normal pillow, and it's a secret that it's full of filthy, filthy sex toys. <laughs> and also if you're asking about traveling most people don't travel with more than one or two because why would you unless you're going to film a porn a six is excessive <laughs> show title six is excessive there's a train somewhere off that's tracks <laughs> that, that's why you need five. I said danger. Biggie Langston had it right. You just need five. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie yeah, Langston won five. the Intercontinental title. Oh, we didn't even mention that. He's not on. He's not on Survivor Series. What the hell? <laughs> yes. 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 I just I picture know, Biggie do. in his room, just a big puff of flour. <laughs> 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 uh, oh. <laughs> so the white family is taking on Punk and Daniel Bryan. Um, uh, it'll be a awesome. good match. Yo, um, you, yeah, really, that'll be real good. loser has to shave their beard. Do we think? Do we think Rowan's gonna gonna? I don't know. Do more. I mean, he's really he's not as good as Luke Harper. I don't know. Yeah. Like I I I don't. I feel like when whatever way the Wyatts goes, uh. Her or God, I can't get the name straight. Rowan is the going to be the ginger outcast of this whole thing with the sheet mask all alone. Um, I think he'll end up with Kali and Santino, former new oddities. That could be. I mean, really. Um, but you know, good to see. It. I mean, but I don't. You know, we usually kind of say, "Oh, big men," but this is a good big man team. You know what? What I'm Bobby? Sorry. I read Taz's tweet, and I guess everybody's talking about David Blaine. He's like, I never seen Chris Angel. Who's better? <laughs> he's his voice. <laughs> I, love, I love it when you do your Taz impression. It makes me so happy. It just ignites joy in my heart. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I just read that and it made me giggle. All right, uh, but we do have uh, Kofi Kingston against The Miz in the Survivor Series kickoff match. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, that's a thing. Uh, so. Uh, how about the Miz turning heel? We, we mentioned it a little bit with our uh, Remember When earlier tonight. Are we, when, we're, yeah. we're, we're happy it a, about it, right? It was we're, a good heel turn. It made me happy. Yeah, it, it kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere. I didn't get a reason for it. I'm sure they popped up on the app afterwards. I don't pay attention to that. Come on, Josh Matthews. Um, but, you know, I, I, good, good. Yeah, hopefully this is him, you know, on on the track back doing good things again. A great heel Miz is the only good Miz. Fuck Miz. I want Kofi to be back on track. Yeah. Damn it, he's got 
a level of talent. Why won't they let him use it? He's Is floundering. It He's dressed as a Dragon Ball Z character now when he comes out. Yes, he certainly Well, is. then he should be teaming with Xavier Woods because he was talking Power Rangers when he was in NXT. <laughs> yeah. Or when he was on last night's Raw and he said it's morphin' time. Yep. yep. I, I missed that on Raw, though, but I was hoping they'd carry that over. So um, I find it funny that Miz like, turned heel on Kofi, the man who kicked him in the face uh, quite a few months back. <laughs> So it's like a long well, coming kind of thing, huh? Actually, if you look online, um, I, I said this last night in the chat. Uh, Miz cut a heel promo when they were on the European tour. Okay, mm-hmm. and it was a really, really good promo. It made it made me remember why I liked the Miz. Mm-hmm. But it was like, you know, I tried to be good to you fans. I tried to do what you guys wanted me to do and all that stuff. And he really like went for it, and it was very, very good. Good, good. Good. Like, I, I still go back to, I loved, like, his WrestleMania, when they did the package, uh, the You Can Hate Me Now clip and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I want them to get back to that, you know? And when he dresses The Rock. <laughs> yes. It was the best yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the Miz TV is like they used to be, you know? Um, I, you know, I, I I think there's more of that left in him um, uh, to a great degree. He was just getting started. I honestly think he feels better as a heel, too. Oh, yeah. He feels natural. Oh, yeah. Well, he's like Gordon. Yeah. He's like Gordon in that regard. Even his character on The Real World was a heel. Mm -hmm. Like, he would always be the Miz on The Real World, and that that was his persona. Yeah. Yeah, the reason he even came up with The Miz was because he saw The Rock being a dick. So he's like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm The Miz. Yep. <laughs> so we'll see what comes of that. Of course, I don't have a wait on these. We talked about the Divas match. I'll be a Survivor Series. Hopefully, hopefully they get a lot out of it. But considering who's in there and considering it's revolving around a show, eh. it is exciting to see AJ and Caitlyn on the same side. Yeah, mm-hmm. that could be interesting. That definitely. I hope. I hope the Chick Busters win the match. That'd be a nice spot. That'd be a nice spot. Um, what about the? I, I think we're we're all excited about this. The the big uh, is it ten man Survivor Series match? Yeah, five one five. And are they officially? Yep. Do they officially have uh, Rey Mysterio on there yet? Yes. Okay, they do. We were yes. excited. We were excited. <laughs> so, but but between Usos, uh, the Rhodes Boys, and 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 Shield, and and, and uh, you know. Uh, the Americans. Um, this has been some good stuff over the last month. Like this is the stuff. I don't know. LB, you remember when we first started going to w- or RWC and they always had those four way tag matches that were just insane and blew our minds oh, yeah, like, every absolutely. month. I mean, this is what it feels like, right? Yeah, it's 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 fantastic. I, I can't uh, I can't say enough good things about it. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, and I'm glad that they're going to keep going. I think we're. I don't know if this is going to be like Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys era of tag team wrestling, but I think this is this could be the best level of multiple tag teams just fucking going for it that we've had in a I, while. I honestly think this is better than that. Yeah? Because well, we have multiple teams that can actually contend. Mm-hmm. When you had Hardys, Dudleys, Edge and Christian, those are really the only three teams – that were in constant contention for the titles. Right. Like you had your APAs and your like uh, two Always goals and stuff like that. And, and thing and <laughs> tag teams that would come in, but none of them really stuck around in a feud. We now have the Usos, the Real Americans, the Wyatts, the Shield, the Rhodes Brothers, and occasionally the primetime players. Mm-hmm. All legitimate contenders. Yep. Hey, hey, don't forget the fucking the uh, the Mexicans. <laughs> um, yeah, the conquistadors. I uh, no, not conquistadors. The, uh, the Mat- matadors. matadors. El loco. <laughs> Carlos. I don't Locos. know if the matadors are there yet though because they've only fought three MB basically. Yeah. I mean, I, like, they're they're the they're the two. Bowl shooting steam out of the screen. They're fucking, they made it. Our truth, uh, our truth and Xavier Woods are apparently a thing. That's true. Okay. But they, like, I, I think talk that, about that. them and the Matadors are like the two coals of this situation. I'm surprised that Raw Country Night, we didn't have a bull roping. 
Yes. Our truth makes me feel the same way that you guys doing puns makes me feel. <laughs> I don't understand why it's popular and it hurts my heart. <laughs> like crush. <laughs> like, crush. like crush. Like crush. Doing the heart punch. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Wow. So Survivor Series, I, I mean, uh, as far as Survivor Series goes, where are we kind of holding this? Are we, you know, we're, I, I, I hold the first, like, what, three or four where we had all Survivor Series as the pinnacle of this of this uh, show. Uh, and the lowest is probably Screwjob year, maybe? Um, I, I say the highest Survivor Series for me ironically had no Survivor Series matches in it. Which one? Dead the Game? 2002. Dead the Game? No. No, uh, Elimination Chamber. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that still kind of fit the theme. I was okay with well, that. It fit the theme, but it had like like I just watched it recently because I wanted to watch it. It had a six man elimination table match. It had the triple threat match of Benoit and Kurt versus the Guerreros versus Ed Who? Rey Mysterio. Bobby had, no. <laughs> it had the elimination <laughs> chamber match. It had Trish versus Victoria in a hardcore match. Wow! It was an amazing card, top to bottom. <laughs> Wow, good. And no, you said no, no series match on it. Nope. The only thing close they had was the elimination tables match. Does this feel like a top four show? I know they really yeah. don't consider it much anymore, except when they no. tell us tell us it's been around for twenty years. Uh, but no, it doesn't feel like a top four show for the year. The top four pay per views they have now are Rumble, Mania, Money in the Bank, and TLC. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. If they bring Gobbledygooker back. Then it will be a top. Wait, wait, wait. TLC. No, he is the Spanish commentary in TNA. They can't bring him. Wait, wait, wait. TLC. Yeah, TLC. Why TLC? It's exciting every year. Every year for the past three years, it's been exciting. Okay. All right. I never. I mean, last year we had the Shield in that awesome six-man match. I always think about it as, and maybe just the first couple years, it's the way it came off. But I always think of it as the. I lost my oh I, I, I like the extreme rules of the of the winter, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I used insane. to have a, you know a, yeah extreme hardcore matches, uh, just on the other end of the year, you know. So I, I don't know. So it never really felt that big. Although it did, you're right, it did produce some really good matches. But I well, think it kind of is like the last stop before they really start WrestleMania time. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's right before the Rumble, so yep, yep, that's where a lot of things end and a lot of things start. And I'm so glad we don't have New Year's Revolution anymore. Like that always seems so awkward. Well, we do still kind of have it. How? Oh. Because No Way Out or Elimination Chamber, like New Year's Revolution, always had the Elimination Chamber. Now we just have Elimination True. Chamber. True. True. But. All right, guys, uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I got one more thing. Oh, okay. Uh, something came out uh, just a couple of days ago that I want to talk about. I'm, I'm curious to see who was all going to get it. Uh, they released a um, like history of WWE, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, like on Blu-ray, and I think that's fascinating because they cover all the major eras, but also they like interview the Undertaker for some of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I find that fucking fascinating. Has anybody seen the interview? Is it like in character or like biker taker? What's the deal there? Because I'm, up to now, from what I've seen, he's I mean, he's very guarded and doesn't do interviews for DVDs. If I had to guess, um, I saw the Triple H documentary, and Undertaker is interviewed in that. Yeah, he it's is. not. It's not in character, and no. it's very, very. He dope. has been popping up more and more. Interesting. Um, like before he did a lot of interviews when he was like biker era taker, I remember. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they just all come off as biker era taker, perhaps. Um, but this is definitely one I want to see. I think, well, yeah, cause he definitely. had a whole DVD when he was biker era taker. That's true too. Like it was a DVD called, this is my yard, I think. Yeah. But, um, after he came back as the dead man gimmick, he hasn't done any interviews like that. Unless it's strictly in gimmick mm. and it's talking about like a specific thing like an elimination chamber or a hell on the cell or something. Yeah, there was but, um 
but this yeah this dvd looks looks pretty good uh, it, 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 like uh, there was some listing that said uh, there's like 25 chapters in, including and some of them were like you know of course hulkamania bruno the garden uh the steroid trial actually gets covered in this um i know a lot of it's really kind of revisionist history but but still really good they're still letting you go at stuff you know i i mean the foley dvd really impressed me with how much he does like in certain points question vince and they allow them to do that you know um but then there's a lot of hey vince is a genius blah 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 you know too in, in a lot of these so i, I don't know I, it, they i've been really impressed with how real the documentaries have been lately uh and last mm -hmm. geez for years now right um so i i think I, since the punk dvd Mm -hmm. uh, before that, even I think because I I remember the Big Show documentary. I remember was really good. Been yeah, doing, it was really good they've too. Been doing good good documentaries for a while now. Um, but absolutely the, the WCW ones, the Starcades, the mm -hmm. the NWO, the um, the Rise and Fall of ECW. ECW I think ones are really good. The, yeah, yeah, that's I think that started the I'm sincerity still, trend. I'm still astonished the people that cropped up for the Foley one. Like, like Shane Douglas being on there just kind of blew my mind. You know, oh, he's he's on your, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, that I know was it's really on Netflix. Good. It so. is on Netflix. It is on Netflix. I finally got around to it. It's like two and a half hours, but it doesn't feel <laughs> like it. You know, it, it's it's just so well done. Um, you know, prob and then I watched that really horrible one with the rivalries. Really good segments, but Renee Young, I feel no, bad for what Sorg. they did with her. What? Sorg, we, we agree to disagree on that one. I loved that one. Wait, uh, okay, Mr. Chemical Engineer, of course you loved one. You're probably the only one that fucking understood those segues. Yeah, and, and it was fantastic. Uh, it was so long and awkward. And uh, one a cute shot Canadian and talking it. about chemical reactions. She's Signing Canadian? up every day for that. <laughs> She's Canadian? Really? Yeah, Renee Young is Canadian. Didn't realize hey. that one. Yep. Mm. Um... Can we learn? Find out what I learned from wrestling that Renee Young's Canadian. <laughs> so there's say. that. Uh, uh, somebody over on this hangout, what'd you learn? <laughs> LB? Oh, I didn't know which hangout you were gesturing to, Sorg. I can't see which computer. Oh, yeah, I, I, I see nothing but green here, Sorg. I don't know which one <laughs> you're talking about. You'll be able to see, though. Um. <laughs> What did I learn? I fucking I learned a lot about goddamn supermarket sweep. <laughs> That's what I fucking learned. I learned that you get you gotta fucking do the challenges because they either these big inflatable things and they're worth anything from fifty to five hundred dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars and and apparently there's a fucking Kmart Canadian supermarket sweep or, or no it's Spanish I'm sorry it's Spanish fucking Kmart supermarket sweep and everyone's an idiot and apparently there's a challenge where you have to put layers of yogurt in a cup and everybody does it wrong because they don't do it how Eamon does it that's what I fucking learned from wrestling this week who are you Bobby I learned that Randy Orton can throw bags of ice like nobody's business and I can't remember the other one I was gonna say. Oh well, that's all right. Man. Apparently, I didn't. I didn't learn that much. Uh, I I learned that on the Thursday before Thanksgiving, we're going to see a family feud. Sorg, the brothers Park are going to fight, and it saddens me. What? Joseph Park has challenged Abyss. To a fight on impact on Thursday. Oh my god, I can't wait to hear the wrap up from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I will not watch Impact, but I love listening to the wrap up. You should come on the hangouts with us. We are insane. I want to, but I don't have I don't you know I can't stretch and watch TNA live here. I just can't. I can't. People will hate me. I'll be sleeping on the couch. Now that, that, my, uh, now that my house. schedule's died down, I can go back to uh uh, joining the TNA hangout with everyone and getting drunk on wine. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Wheels? What did I learn? I've learned I'm really, really enjoying 3MB lately. I mean, like you said earlier, I honestly hope it continues for a long time with this because I just want to see what each city brings with them. Awesome. Jessica? Uh, I learned that John Cena's elbow is a squirter. Oh. Uh, 
I heard that was gross. Fuck. It was pretty. It was, it was pretty hardcore. I gotta admit. Total. I want Total Divas to have a week without mentioning a bodily function. <laughs> like, can Don't we happen. please that's have a, that once? That's impossible, dude. They're on the E network, okay? It started with Cameron saying she had a yeast infection, and it's just gone up from there. It's for the ladies, man. <laughs> so, so blood squirting elbows it's talking are the to the ladies, right? Is I mean that's the demographic for this, right? So the yeah. like that ladies makes... like seeing John Uso fart in a in a car. <laughs> to be fair, they deserve that. <laughs> You're talking about the ladies on the show or ladies in general? The ladies on the show. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Uh, uh, st- strictly Cameron, because. Everything horrible that happens to Cameron, she kind of deserves. Hmm. Pretty much. Hmm. Hmm. Who else would you learn from wrestling? What? That, that was everybody, I think. It's everybody. Uh, we just need the oh, chat room. Are we joining just us the here. No, no, no. We got a chat room, oh. though, that has stuff. This has got delicious mayhem show. <laughs> what? But we only learned that Lunchbox needs puns and really needs to tree leaves and fruit bark. Ha, 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 ha. Um... <laughs> What was that? I was being Bill Cosby. Don't worry about it, Bill. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being on Mayhem. Uh, thank you, everybody, at like, kick TKO at Bobby FJ Town, at the e Riz, even though we couldn't have them in here, at Mad Mike 4883 at Hot Wheels RWA with a Z, at DJ Lunchbox, at Bobby FJ Town. I'm at Sorgatron. Go watch, go follow, at WWE Away Messages. Because it's amazing, and there's a lot of really smart and funny people that work on that. At WWE Away Messages on the Twitters. Thank you, guys. Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. At Mayhem Show on Facebook, on Google+. Plus, at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And the phone number and buy the app. Check out the t-shirts. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.